Welcome to High Performance, the podcast featuring Josh Fegan and Alexander Phillips. Alexander, today we've got a really important topic about, you know, what are the major lead sources that an agent should really have inside of their business and why those lead sources can also determine the fee that you actually get as an agent. So Alex, um, over the years, you know, you've had lots of different lead sources that have, you've kind of tried and or you know, tried to build. But now as your business has started to really gain traction and momentum, you've got some core dominant lead sources that are important. For agents that are starting out, for people that are new, even for people that are maybe a little bit off and have been in it for a while, what are some of the major lead sources that they should really have in their business and how do those lead sources impact on fees that they get in the listing presentation? I think it's important, Josh, you don't just focus on one lead source. I think there's probably you know, eight to 10 potential lead sources an agent has and you've got to make sure you're always using those lead sources. It might be community aspect, your own profile, referrals, expired listings, database management, um, you know, letterbox drops, Instagram, you know, social media. There's so many different aspects. But for us, you know, what, 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 you know, if I look back at the business and, and how we've grown, it's definitely, I think, having a really good name in the marketplace, which then people see you as more of an advisor than a real estate agent which comes back to really good database management and what you've done over the years to build on that. And, th- and that database management then returns into really good referrals, even if you've never sold for them or bought th- or they've bought through you. But when they're sitting at a dinner party and their friends start talking about real estate, which happened to us so many times over the years, then you're going to get a call. And that, you know, that then generates into a, a lead source that is quite easy to, to convert because you know, a referral, it, like like anything, you know, like a, a doctor referral or, you know, a referral for someone to buy a car, whatever it may be, is a lot easier, one, to then convert, but also get a, a good fee out of. You know, the interesting thing here is, here is that I've tended to find that the colder the lead source, you know, often the lower the fee, you know, because you're competing against other agents and you're in a position where you're trying to prove value. Whereas if you're in a position where they've already got to experience some of your service, that that makes a massive difference because it's often less competition, which allows you to charge a much better fee. And so inside of a business, I always say to people that you need a minimum of like three really good, strong lead sources. So if it's going to be open homes, that's great. But if you don't have any open homes that weekend, then you're not actually generating any leads. So open for inspections might be a big one. But also too, I think the one that a lot of people miss is just a list of all the people that they already know. And this is like really maximizing every single relationship um, of all the people that you've ever met. You know, and I was dealing with a a young guy just um, entered into real estate only about 12 months ago this week. And one of the things that he was saying to me is that, mate, I'm finding it a bit hard to, you know, kind of find some leads. And one of the things that we identified is is that he's actually grown up in the area that he works and he's got lots of mates in the area. And a lot of his mates' dads, you know, own pretty expensive or good homes in the area. I said to him, okay, so what would happen if like literally your office listed the house next door to one of your mates' houses? Would you get on the phone and ring one of your mate's dads to let him know that? He goes, oh, no, I'd never do that because I don't want to be a real estate agent like that. I don't want to be all like Amway on people. So to him, mate, that's actually a really big blockage because that should be the easiest call for you to make is to ring one of your mate's dads. You know, g'day, John, it's Josh. Just sort of give you a quick call. Look, up, it's not about um, coming over for the weekend for a barbecue or anything, but I just want to let you know we've actually just listed the house next door to yours. And, and as a real estate agent, I thought I should let you know. So it's going to be open on Saturday, 10 to 10.30. Love to see you pop through if you get a chance. Um, it'd be kind of cool to see you there. And if it's all right with you, would it be all right if I maybe, you know, maybe give you a quick call and let you know when it sells and what it makes? Now, to be super professional, when he, as soon as he hangs up that phone, I said, why don't you then send a letter, you know, direct mail, say, you know, hi, John, um, thanks very much for taking my call. Here's a copy of the brochure for the property next door. We'll be open on Saturday, 10 to 10.30. Love to be of assistance. Feel free to pop through. And of course, I'll let you know what it makes. Puts that brochure in, sends it. What now happens in in that dad's mind is that, hang on a sec, that young guy, Josh, that we've had coming through, you know, he's, he's been a good mate of my son's for a while, but look at him now. Like he's trying to be a good agent. Look at his follow through and his diligence. And it's actually that experience that's now going to allow his mates to now be a great referrer and also now to put him on the agenda for at least being considered to be the agent in time for when they do come to sell that property. And that's the bridge that a lot of people have got across is that learning how to like really work the people they already know. Alex, how important is it about that personal network of people that you've met through life and using that as your real estate database? Well, that they become a sales team for you, Josh. Like they're the ones out there you know, talking your good work, you know, spreading the word. And that's why it's great not just having them, but, you know, a really good database because they're your voice in the marketplace. And obviously that just going to create 
really good profile and just bring in more and more referral business for you. And this is like where that major lead source that, you know, we all build our careers on, which is all around buyer work. Like if you're really good with buyers, you can't help but generate leads off that. That's about making sure that you're going through physical April for inspection booklets, the inquiry logs, and actually really servicing buyers and taking them out to some properties. If they've got a genuine intention to want to purchase, let's do that. But understand that once a buyer buys from you, they become a past client of the firm. They are your next seller because they are ultimately going to be referring you to someone else because of their buying experience. Or once they move into the property, they're going to be selling that at some point in time. And I think that this is really important to to understand is that know your marketplace. And if you're working a lot of first home home buyers and maybe mid average sale price type stuff, a lot of the buyers that are buying are even young families and they're only going to be in that house for a couple of years before they need to get that bigger house, you know, in order to be able to go and build some much better work. So Alex, if you were in a position now that you're really looking to get better fees, what do you what do you need to understand you know when it comes to like referrals and as an example about how that can determine a much better fee for you um how the referrals come about where the referrals come from is it something you've sold for that you know they might have discussed fees uh, which a lot of people will do um you know is it someone you know like a solicitor that it's a deceased estate and you know they're, they're you're the only agent in there and you can charge a full fee so asking the right questions in that first conversation on on the understanding of why they've called you, the reasoning behind it, and then you can you know obviously manipulate what fee you're going to charge or make sure that you're charging the right fee to one obviously maximise your earnings but also so to secure the business. Yeah, and I think this is really important. This is about it's all about how you position yourself. I was working with an agent this week who who is walking in and in the listing presentation, if he's identified that the consumer is not economically driven, one of the things that he'll drop in at the presentation is will say, Alex, I'm um, just so that you're aware, I am a little bit more expensive than some of the other agents. Uh, but it's important to know that what a lot of agents will do in order to try to get your listing is that they're going to offer you a lower fee and a higher price, you know, at the start. But what actually ends up happening is that they end up selling your home for a lower price because they, you know, lack of process and experience, and therefore their fees very expensive for the level of service that they've provided. I'd much rather be in a position that I come in and I talk conservatively around price and maximise that for you, and that ultimately then when you look at my fee that I charge, you're going to say, you know what, Josh was actually cheap for what he did. I think that's really the important thing is to really learn how to position self so that if you can do that right, it changes it. But just remember, cold lead sources, lower fees, warmer lead sources, better fees. And that makes a massive difference to building a much better business.